So I'm just gonna go over some um, applications of ultrasound in ophthalmology. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit of the stuff we already know right in the beginning, just really quick review, and then a couple of clinical applications um, that you guys might not know about. All right, so here we go. Uh, yes, okay, so quick review. Here's our basic anatomy of the eye. Um, we have the cornea up front, uh, the lens right behind the pupil, the vitreous body is the big um, center opening here, and then got the optic nerve and the retina in the back here. And what we've already done is we've used just like a linear probe or a phase array to take some ultrasound of the eyeball here. And we can correspond the anatomy right here. We have the anterior chamber right in front of the pupil, the lens behind it, um, big center vitreous chamber here. And the very back is the retina and the optic nerve we can see in a couple other pictures soon. So yeah, so ultrasound is really good. Um, in, in some trauma or like ED situations, if you want to quickly see what's going on in the back of the eye, you can just use the basic, you know, ultrasound and just switch it to the optho setting, right? And so some common pathologies you might find um, just really quickly, here's a vitreous detachment. So that's when the vitreous humor kind of pulls away from the back of the eye. And you see this hyperchoic line here um, and how you tell the difference from this and a retinal detachment is the retinal detachment will be tethered to the optic nerve, right? Because it's it's made of the optic nerve. And um, sometimes it can come along with a little bit of blood. Sometimes the blood's just there on its own. You can see a little bit more hypochoic uh, stuff in the middle of the vitreous, a little bit of blood there. And here's the RD where you can see that it's actually attached to the optic nerve here. So that's like the key difference that you want to make between a vitreous detachment and a retinal detachment, right? Two very different things. Um, you know, prognosis are very different for these two. And so a couple more pathologies we can find here. If you have masses in the eye, like this is a tumor. This is actually a um, choroidal melanoma. So you can detect masses within the eyeball as well. And this is kind of your worst case scenario here, ruptured globe pretty much your eyeball is ruptured. And, you know, if you kind of detect a ruptured globe in the ED setting, you know, do you really want to be pressing on it with the ultrasound probe? Maybe not. Maybe you'll just do it really lightly. Um, maybe a CT is better, but you'll kind of see everything stirred up in here. And so those are some of the common pathologies. So jumping into some clinical applications, um, if you go into an outpatient ophthalmology clinic, they have all these fancy scanners and and probes and stuff. And one of the ones is called the B scan, the bright scan ultrasound. It's basically the same thing. It's just a little more precise. You can see the probe here is a lot smaller than the probes that might come on the general ultrasound machines because it's a uh, ultrasound made specifically for the eyeball. So you have um, similar concept, a little bit of gel over a closed eye, and you'll get the similar looking appearances here. Um, you can see the vitreous, the retina, the optic nerve. It's a really good optic nerve right there. So now why would an ophthalmologist want to get an ultrasound in a clinical setting? And so kind of going to explain a little bit of why. So when you go to the ophthalmologist, oftentimes they'll do a dilated fundus exam. So what is that? Basically, they'll put some dilating drops in your eyes so that they can have a better view of the back of your eye, which is called the fundus. And so the fundus encompasses everything that you can see in the back of the eye. So you have the optic nerve, you have your vessels, um, the main fovea right here, you can see your peripheral retina. And so this is what the ophthalmologist is trying to look at um, when they do a dilated exam. Now, if there's anything in the way where they can't see the back of your eye, then they'll order a B scan because they wanna know what's going on, right? So a couple examples of when they would order a B scan is a large vitreous hemorrhage. So say they dilate a person and all they see is a bunch of blood, you know, they need to still assess, is there a retinal detachment hiding back there or something? So they will order a B scan um, in the clinic. So the patient can just get it same day right then and there. And then they bring the patient back and then they can go over the ultrasound sound results, making sure they rule out anything bad that's going on in the back of the eye. Um, another example is a really bad cataract. So a cataract is 
the opacification of the lens of your eye. And so if it gets really bad, like in this picture, um, it actually will not let any light through your eyeball. So the ophthalmologist can't see in the back of your eye and the patient can't see anything <laughs> because the cataract is so dense. And so say this patient wants to get cataract surgery, the ophthalmologist would order a B-scan because they need to know, is there anything going on in the back of the eye that we can see, um, that we can know about before we go ahead and proceed with surgery, right? And maybe there's a tumor hiding back there. Maybe there's a retinal detachment because actually, you know, with the denser the cataract, the probability of those things coming along with it is actually a little higher. So they want to make sure, rule out anything bad in the back of the eye, they can go ahead and proceed with surgery. And so here's a second application of ultrasound in an outpatient clinic setting. And so it's kind of similar, like it's still using ultrasound, but as you can see, it's just a single wave being shot here in the eye. And so what the A scan does is it takes the length um, measurements of the anatomy of your eye. So it can tell you, you know, how far in does your lens exist and how long is your eyeball? So it's really good for determining axial length. And it's, it's taken a little bit differently. I found this stock photo of an A scan. Um, your eyeballs open, they put a couple numbing drops in there so that the probe is pressed right up against the beginning of your eyeball so that it can get the length of your eyeball pretty accurately. And so why is axial length relevant? Um, because axial length is important for choosing um, an intraocular lens when you get cataract surgery. And so for those who don't know, cataract surgery is when they literally remove the opacified cataract out of your eyeball and they put a fake, wait, yeah, the opacified cataract out of your eyeball and they'll put a fake lens in and it kind of looks like this. It's really small. It goes right um, where your lens used to be. And axial length is important because you can customize the power of your lens to the individual. And so depending on how long someone's eyeball is, if you guys remember physics, you know, eyeball physics from the MCAT and stuff like that, um, how long your eye is determines how well you see. And so depending on how long someone's eye is and um, any additional corrections that they may have needed, then you can customize the strength of the IOL. And so actually it's kind of like having glasses inside your eyeball. You know, some people don't need glasses after cataract surgery anymore because they corrected it using the IOL. And so it used to be the gold standard, the A-scan, um, for taking axial length, but actually we've kind of moved on to the IOL master, which uses a laser beam instead of an ultrasound beam to measure the length of the eye. And you can see just how much more precise it is. It's like just such a skinnier beam than the ultrasound, and it can actually um, go all the way down to the RPE layer. Um, so we've been using more of the IOL master in terms of pre-op measurements for cataract surgery, determining axial length, but we still do use the A-scan because in people with really dense cataracts, like the picture I showed earlier, the IOL master um, can't penetrate that um, dense cataract really well. So, you know, in about 5%, 5 to 10% of patients who want cataract surgery, they will have such a dense cataract that the ophthalmologist will order an A-scan um, as the pre-op measurements to determine axial length instead of the IOM master. So that's the second application in a clinical setting. So yeah, here are my references, just um, you guys, quick review of the stuff we already knew, but also maybe some stuff you didn't know, A scan, B scan. These are some things that the ophthalmologist might order while you're in the clinic um, to use some ultrasound. Thanks.